Good morning, everybody. And thank you for joining our talk, GitOps, I did it again, protecting your GitOps system from being used for privilege escalation. Thank you for being here today. GitOps is a rising star in the DevOps and cloud native community. And from our experience, it seems like almost every organization is adopting it these days. In this talk, we invite you on a journey to explore GitOps from a security-focused perspective. We will delve into the mind of an attacker, examining GitOps best practices and architecture through their eyes. Our intention is to equip you with a deeper understanding of GitOps and practical tools for its security, strengthening your entire organization's security. Now, just to get a general idea of our audience today, please raise your hand if you or your organization are active users of GitOps. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, no, please raise your hand if you're here to learn about GitOps hacking shenanigans. Okay, so the same people. <laughs> uh, perfect. I promise we'll have something for each group. So let's begin. In our talk today, we'll have five key steps. First, we will explain why we identify GitOps and Argo CD as emerging technologies worth researching. Then we will study GitOps. How, how does it operate? What is the GitOps manifesto? And how does it look like from an attacker's perspective? Then we will share in the exploit part, we will share our research story detailing how we discovered a critical vulnerability in Argo CD system and its implications, as well as sharing insights on how to conduct a similar research. After that, for the GitOps security versus reality part, we will examine GitOps security best practices and identify scenarios where open source projects and cloud providers require a bit of extra effort on our part to avoid being vulnerable to GitOps attacks. And finally, we'll wrap everything up by discussing our practical next steps, and we will share a surprise to, to help you apply what we've learned in this talk. Sounds good? Perfect. A word about us. My name is Orin. I'm a security researcher at Cycon. I have seven years of experience. And I used to research Kerberos and networking, and currently I research uh, supply chain and cloud security. Hey, my name is Elad. I'm a security researcher at SciCode. I also have seven years of cybersecurity experience. I'm mainly focusing on application security and supply chain security. Perfect. So let's begin by identifying a trend. But before that, I want to share with you the story of how the idea for this talk came to life. But it's not for publication, so keep it between us. In 2023, we tried to get accepted to KubeCon North America, and we really thought our talks would make it. However, they got rejected, which left us surprised and mainly frustrated. So for the next KubeCon, this one, we decided to take a shrewd approach to improve our chances of acceptance. We reviewed last year's KubeCon schedule to try and identify security trends, um, sorry, technology trends that might reveal security blind spots. And as we review the schedule, we've noticed that the term GitOps kept appearing. And while we weren't familiar with it, the talks were often accompanied by dramatic titles from prominent companies. As you can see, there was GitOps at Adobe and GitOps at Spotify, and even how GitOps changed our lives and can change yours too from a person working in VMware. Great title for a talk. So we were intrigued. What is this GitOps that everybody's talking about? And the next question would be, 
do people actually use it, or it's just like conference talk material? Apparently, yes. 91%, probably like 91% of the audience today, are actively using GitOps. Um, as stated in a micro survey conducted by the CNCF in 2023. And what's even crazier is that out of the 9% holding back, two thirds claim that they will embrace GitOps to their organizations during the year of 2024. There is a month and a half left for this year. So, okay, people use it, there is something going on, but how do they use it? Apparently there is something called GitOps tools. And we were familiar with some of them, but the king for GitOps tools, Argo CD, um, on, the, on the left side, with over 60% embracement rate, we didn't know about it, nothing. So we went to, the, to its website, and we saw that there are some small organizations that say that they use Argo CD. You might know some of them. So GitOps and Argo CD, there's definitely something going on, but we don't know what it means. Probably you can explain to us later. So our next step would be to understand what are they exactly. And I will let my colleague Elad continue. Thank you, Rin. So coming to this research, we wanted to know everything about GitOps. Researching it from bottom up, inside out, and basically be the GitOps gurus. So, GitOps is a Git source of truth. GitOps is a Git source of truth, meaning all the configuration files, all the resources are stored in a single Git repository. It could be GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. Then, we have versioning, meaning, think about this. You're launching new clusters, new buckets every day, and when something wrong goes wrong, you're trying to roll back and find the missing spot. But with GitOps, this is a non-issue. All you need to do is go back one commit, one commit backwards and your all infrastructure will be rolled back. And in the end of the day, the current state in the Git repository will represent the current and the desired state in the Kubernetes cluster or in the cloud generally. So let's visualize this a little bit. Okay, we have all of our Kubernetes cluster, uh, all of our Kubernetes resources, all of our buckets, Terraforms, everything inside the Git repository. Then we have a GitOps, as a, the GitOps agent that makes sure to be synced and up to date with the Git repository. Then when a new commit comes by, it will launch the latest changes to the cloud environment. And like we said, a common uh, GitOps agent is the Argo CD. But before that, how it looks from the attacker perspective. From the attacker perspective, the picture looks a lot simpler. Attackers want to get to the cloud environment, right? Because the production environment, internal resources, and secrets are all in the cloud environment. And who has direct access? To the cloud environment, GitOps, GitOps agents that are appealing to attackers and make sense to be appealing attack vector. And the most leading, Argo CD, yeah. Argo CD it, it runs inside a cluster in a separated namespace. It's a rising star project on GitHub and it's a an CNCF graduated project, amazing. And from Argo CD perspective, the picture look very similar. This time, in a Git repository, we have all of our Kubernetes resources in a single place. Then, Argo CD will make sure to be up to date and launch, launch the latest changes to the Kubernetes cluster. So, from a mind of attacker, attacking Argo CD will be very valuable. And now, to the exploitation phase. We'll explain how we leveraged Argo CD to gain elevated permissions inside a cluster. So let, let's dive in. We're launching Argo CD, like we said, we didn't know much about it. 
pushing some buttons and creating a new application. Like we said before, makes sense. The first thing will be to connect a new Git repository. This time is a GitHub repository with all of our deployments and related stuff for Kubernetes cluster. One moment go by and it's already syncing and processing and everything is going smoothly. And one more minute, we have our cluster up and running with all of our deployments. Pretty easy, plug and play process, right? But behind the scenes, it's a little bit more complicated. We committed a new uh, commit to the repository, right? Could be deployment, could be anything else. Then, a repository service makes sure to be up to date with the latest changes and save the latest changes in the Redis cache server, a new component. Then, we have the Kubernetes controller that syncs with that Redis cache instance and makes sure that if he has something new, launching to the cluster. And in the end of the day, we have the current state in the Git repository synced with the desired state in the Kubernetes cluster. So, like we saw just now, the Redis cache server is a huge component along the way, kind of like a middleware between the Git repository and the Kubernetes cluster. So we went into the docs, researching it a little bit to see what is the main role of that Redis cache instance. Navigating to the docs revealed an interesting line. Secrets are available to anyone who has access to the Redis instance. Hmm. We like secrets, obviously. So let's access the Redis cache instance, right? Tunneling our way through to the Redis instance, and we got access, totally anonymous. Navigating inside the Redis instance, and we see one key that is very interesting to us, a manifest one. Going to the manifest, and we see all of our deployments, configuration files from the Git repository, just right there in a single place. So we are thinking to ourselves, what if we can inject malicious deployment straight into the Redis cache instance, and by that, interfering with the conventional flow, the Git conventional flow, and inject malicious deployment straight into the Redis cache instance? So let's do it. We are preparing a malicious deployment that, of course, will be privileged to gain a pre elevated permission within the cluster. Second, reverse shell. We, are want, we want to create a reverse shell back to the attacker server and gain remote access to the cluster and maybe a privileged one. So let's do it. We are waiting, we are setting up our environment. One moment goes by, one minute goes by, and it failed. It didn't work, we didn't get any connection. Navigating back to the Redis instance and like nothing got changed. Nothing got changed and our changes got rolled back. So investigating a little bit deeper, thinking what happened in this process because we just now injected the malicious deployment to the Redis cache instance and we found out what happened. We, as an external attacker within the cluster in a separated namespace, tried to inject malicious deployment straight into the Redis cache instance. Then the repository service got notified about those changes and made sure that the Git repository will be up to date with the Redis cache instance and rolled back those changes back to the desired state. So what now? Are we finding a new research idea, a new trend? What are we planning to do from here? I will let my colleague Orin continue from here. Thank you, Elad. 
It is a complicated spot in this talk where you hand me the mic, but I will do my best. So our changes in the application manifest got rolled back. But how did the repository service know that the application manifest was tempered? Could there be something we've missed in the application manifest? We went back to the application manifest and apparently, yes, <laughs> the first value of the application manifest is the one we've missed. And the first entry which is called the cache entry hash and its value seems something like a base64. So could it be some kind of validation mechanism for the content of the application manifest, like checksum? Maybe. Luckily, Algo CD is an open source project, so we could just go straight into the source code and try and identify the function that generates this value. So this is what we've done, and we encounter this function, the generate cache and entry hash. And we thought to ourselves, well, probably they're using some kind of private key to sign the, the, the manifest, a secret. And we thought that this is a dead end. But when we dove into the code to try and see what are they doing, we encountered this comment. And it says, hash the JSON representation into a base64 encoded. And check out this part. We don't need a cryptographic hash algorithm since this is only for detect detecting data corruption. Well, great news for us, right? <laughs> because it means that we can mimic the logic of the generate cache entry hash function in order to sign our own application manifest with the tampered value, values we've, we've injected. So for our second round of trying to inject a malicious deployment to the Redis instance, we have used the same Kubernetes deployment which contains a privileged pod, which once deployed will spawn a reversal to an attacker controlled server, our server. But this time we have recalculated the cache entry hash. We inserted the changes and waited for the changes to take place. And this time, it worked. And we received a privileged connection from within the victim's cluster to our attacker controlled server. Victim's cluster is research cluster, right? We're not attackers. So in the Algo web application now, what we could see is that a new record was created and within that record, there was that attacker pod, which is our injected pod in the injected deployment, which is now being managed and verified that it's running correctly by the Algo CD server itself. So how would it look like, this attack vector from attacker's perspective? What could an attacker do? So first, an attacker could access the file system of all the pods that are running in the cluster, as it has file system privileges to the host node, to the worker node that's running it, as it can give itself all the capabilities that are available. Also, he could steal all the secrets from the Kubernetes environment, as it can just mount himself the secret, because he, the attacker can now deploy whichever resource he desires. And also, he could steal the token from the, from the other Kubernetes pods as it has access to their file system, right? And if you're into networking, you probably are familiar with this application. The attacker could sniff and intercept all the pod's communication within the cluster, stealing production net networking communication, as it also has capabilities for all the network interfaces of the host node. And if you're not into Kubernetes, don't worry, we have something for you as well. The attacker could also steal the IAM token of the host node and then start his lateral movement journey in the cloud environment. So either way, it is bad news. So the attacker's new, new capabilities would be as follows. He could steal all the secrets in the Kubernetes cluster. He could sniff and intercept all the networking communication, 
it could deploy whichever resource it desires to the Kubernetes cluster and escape to the cloud environment. Now imagine that any compromised pod in the cluster could have performed this attack. Not good. We have reported this vulnerability to the Algo CD team and they have scored it a critical score of 9.1. We were very happy. And I want to seize this opportunity to give a shout out to Michael, Leonardo and Pavel from the Argo CD development team for being highly collaborative and helping us uh, mitigating this vulnerability in making Argo CD safer for all its users. Okay, so to recap this last part, as it was intense, at least for me, we have learned that any compromised pod in a victim's cluster could have accessed the Redis instance within the Algo CD namespace in the same cluster, steal all the secrets from the application manifest if they exist, and also inject whichever resource it desires to the manifest, and by that, compromising the entire cluster. Do you want to see a demo of that? How would the attacker look like? Okay, so this is a live pre-recorded demo. So <laughs> here we can see the attacker server. We are listening on port 50852, waiting for a connection from the client cluster. And this is a compromised pod. It could be a web show. Oh, oh my God. We had to. Sorry. So this is a <laughs> this is our attacker server. Thank you. And we are listening on port 5852. And here is a compromised pod within the cluster. It could have been a pod with a public net facing um, to the network. And that compromise it has low privileges. And as we can see, it is being managed by the Algo CD instance. So they just like um, a website. And it has no privileges to the cluster. It should, not, it should not be able to privilege escalate. And we have installed our tool that implements the, this exploit we've just discussed. And this tool has two modes. First, the detect mode. And then the exploit mode. In the detect mode, it does something very cool. It will try to resolve the full name of the Algo CD Redis instance within the Algo CD namespace against the Kubernetes DNS server in order to retrieve his IP address. And then if we find a Redis instance and an Algo CD server, we will query the version of the Algo CD. And as we can see, the version is vulnerable, I'm telling you. And we got also the IP address of the Redis instance. So now for the exploit part, it requires two flags. First, the injection file, which will be whichever Kubernetes YAML based resource uh, configuration you desire, which will, it will inject to the application manifest, and also the IP of the Redis instance. So, once it will log in to the Redis instance, if the script will succeed, he will iterate over all the application manifest and inject the malicious deployment into each and every one of them. So even if the client performs a rollback, the malicious deployment will still remain. And we can see that the attack has completed successfully. It found one application manifest and re recalculated the cache entry hash and of course, injected our malicious deployment. So now, when we will go back to the Algo CD server, we'll be able to see that he manages a new pod now, that attacker, which is our pod. And if we'll take a look on our attacker server, we can see that we have received a new connection from within the client's cluster. And this connection is privileged. So now, we could use it to deploy whichever resource it desires and do all the bad things we've just discussed. So 
this is how it will look like from an attacker's perspective. Sorry. Oh. Now Elad will continue and discuss what are the actual GitOps security principles we want to bring today. Thank you, Rin. What a great pre-recorded live demo, isn't it? This research was great. From studying GitOps into exploiting our CD, all the way to the patch. Along the way, we learned a lot of best practices and common pitfalls in GitOps workflows. And today, I want to share with you three of the things we learned. The first one is cluster separation. Imagine two scenarios, right? The first one will have our production application in the same cluster like our GitOps management tool. One day, sadly, one of the application pods got compromised by an external attacker. Attacker will start to map everything and uh, every resource beside them in the same cluster. And what he will find out? That there is a GitOps agent right near him inside the cluster. Now, compromising the GitOps agents with attacks we just saw, gaining privileged access to the GitOps agent, and with that, compromising the entire cluster. And in the second scenario, we have two cluster configurations, one for the application and one for the GitOps management tool. The same thing happens here. The pod got compromised and the attacker will start to map every resource near him. But this time, when trying to access a GitOps agent or any other management tool, it will fail. So the first principle today is keeping clusters separate for our management tool, in this case, the GitOps, and our application tool. The second point is network policy and ensures that we have a CNI plugin to enforce those network policies. For example, with Argo CD, network policies come by default. We have what resources of Argo CD are able to access the Redis cache instance. Great, right? But are those network policies being enforced by default? So we went into a journey in the three main cloud providers to check which one of them had network policies enforced by a CNI plugin. Which one of them do you think had that? And we found out that only GCP had CNI plugin by default without manual configuration, while AWS and Azure required more manual configuration after setting up the cluster. So the second principle here is validating that we have CNI plugin that enforces that network policies. And the third one, you probably heard about that, updating versions. So we took Argo CD as a case study to see how much Argo CD are patched in the wild. And we found out that more than two thirds of the publicly exposed Argo CD application in the wild are vulnerable six months later. So the third one, like in any aspect of cybersecurity, keeping the Argo CD up to date as much as possible. And now, to wrap this whole thing up, I'll let my colleague, my colleague Orin continue from here. Thank you. So, as promised, now we'll share a full security checklist for GitOps and also a surprise because we promise and this is what we do when you promise. So, first, adding on top of the three security principles Elad has presented, we have created based on our Argo CD research and our broader research on GitOps, the GitOps complete security checklist 
which contains many security principles you can follow and apply to your organization. And don't, don't worry, you don't have to take a picture of that. <laughs> and to make it easier for everyone, we have created this open source project, which is called the GitOps Security Champion. And within that project, we have inserted all the security principles we think that are crucial for GitOps security based on our research, along with explanations, how to apply them, and why is it important, and also examples for how can it go wrong. So we invite you to, to read that and maybe pass it on to someone who, who needs to read that. And most important, we know it's not everything, and there is a lot of more effort we could put in, and therefore we invite you to collaborate with us and contribute, and maybe together we can make GitOps safer without making it slower or like slowing down the pace, because this is not what we want to do. So please join our effort. This is what we had for you for today. We really appreciate your time and the fact that you've been here. And please scan the QR code. This is the repository for the GitOps security agent. Maybe give it a, scar, a start, maybe open an issue, maybe even add the documentation. And And we don't have time for questions, <laughs> but we will be happy to stay after the talk if you have any. So please feel free to reach out. And um, thank you again for being here. We appreciate the opportunity.